You know, there was a uh, famous news story out that really bothered me. It was a uh, Denver couple, I guess. And um, I believe the name was Jean Benet Ramsey, and it exposed the world as well as me to something that I would rather not have known about. And that was the exploitation of children in beauty pageants. These child, I think of it as pornography, but these child beauty pageants where parents go out of their way to make their children into something they're not, to force them into being miniature adults, to live vicariously through them. In the same way that sometimes, even in the Olympics, you know, people get carried away sometimes when they're forcing their children into becoming circus animals or circus stars because now, oh, ah, look what they can do. Oh, how wonderful it is that they are excellent at giving up their childhood for the price of admiration because there is a price to pay. You see, if you invest your childhood, you can never get back that innocence that you lost. If you invest that time of when God has given you the youthfulness and the vigor of being a young person or a young child, and you invest it in something else, you, you have planted seeds of this certain type of life that you want to live, full of adoration and admiration, then what happens when the admiration and adoration is gone? When you can only be so competitive up to a point. Is it always about competition? Are we always meant to be the best, the number one, achieve the gold, to be the beauty queen, the John Benet Ramses, the sadly now the children pastors, the child idols, the latest American dream whiz that, ooh, ah, look at that kid. Oh, it's so adorable. They're singing like an adult. <laughs> How disgusting, how vulgar it is to presume that what you see on a video, that what you think behind the scenes hasn't gone on, what you don't know about backstage and the hours and the agony and the pain and the suffering that goes on, to think that that's godliness, that that's training up a child in the way they should go? I don't think so. Because you see, when you've done that to a child, though you may gain the whole world, you sacrifice their soul. You don't see great ministers come up and say, oh, I was a child evangelist and I grew up to be, you know, the latest Billy Graham. No, you don't. They went to church. They obeyed their parents because they learned obedience to their parents. They learned family life. They learned to develop slowly through the childhood process, through the teenage process, through the adult years, because then they have something to relate to. It was never meant to be that your body, your mind, or your soul was prepared for these things that adults are making children do. And quite honestly, it, it terrifies me to think that things like that haven't decreased, but have increased. If the world, I once said, you know, if the world was going towards abortion, I don't want to live in that world. And now that we have abortion lesser, for some reason we have exploitation of children greater. Not only do we have child prostitutes, we have child drug addicts, we have child dealers, we have child mules transporting drugs, we have child slavery, we have babies being sold on the white market and the black market, we have body parts being sold. We have development of stem cells being taken sometimes from living tissue.
in the Christian world we have pastors that are children, elders that are children, worship leaders that are children, evangelists that are children. My God, my God, why have you forsaken us? But this was not the kingdom of God, not what you intended for us. There is mercy and grace extended always to us. So literally, we can do just about anything we want to. But, you know, Jesus warned something. He said, if you put in front of these children a stumbling block, if you cause any of these little ones to not come to the Father for such as God desired, then it would be better if you took a giant rock and tied or put a chain on it and cast it into the sea and put it around your neck than to suffer one of those to stumble because of you or to sin. What the hell are you doing to children? What indeed? Self kills power from God calling. Dwelling with me, desiring only my will and to do my work, my spirit cannot fail to pass through the channel of your life into the lives of others. Many think it is humility to say they do little and are of little value to my world. To think that is pride. But if the pipe were to say, I do so little, I wish I could be more use, the reply would be, it is not you, but the water that passes through you that saves and blesses. All you have to do is see that there is nothing to block the way so that the water cannot flow through. A pipe that has roots in it has to be cleared and cleaned. The pipe that chokes off the water flow has to be cleared. The only block there can be in your channel is self. You are the blockage. Keep that out and know that my spirit is flowing through. Therefore, all must be better for coming in contact with you because you are the channel of my spirit. You are the minister that the Holy Spirit flows through to touch other people's lives. See this and you will think it natural to know they are being helped, but not by you, but by my spirit flowing through you as a channel. When it comes to children, how dare any adult who is responsible for that child until they are outside of that home or released from the covering that that parent is. But how dare they take the ministry of the Holy Spirit and try to force it through someone else? How dare anyone stop a little child from coming into Jesus? For such is the kingdom of God. How dare anyone sell anyone's soul for the sake of gain, whether in pride, whether in lust of the eye, whether in the flesh. How dare we watch and do nothing but participate by passing it on, by buying, by seeing, by being a part of it and not objecting. Randy Stonehill and I can't think of his name, um, but he's the guitarist. Once wrote a song that said something about who will speak up for the little ones, helpless and half abandoned. They've got a right to choose life. They don't want to lose. I've got to speak up to you. You know, who will speak up for the little ones? Children have no idea what their parents are doing. A child can only learn prejudice from an adult. 
A child can only learn bias from an adult. A child can only learn about Jesus as a young child from you. And what are you revealing to them? Are you making them into monstrosities, abominations in the eyes of God for the righteousness sake that you think is somehow honored by God? No. Peace, love, joy, you can instill those into a child. They accept directly from you the word of God. And they want to share the same love that you were supposed to have for them, that God had for you. To be examples of grace and to allow the Holy Spirit to flow through. Not to go out and save the world, but to bless you. To love you, parent. To be there with you as you are a family that is an example of what the church ought to be. And if you are out doing evangelism with your children, and your children are being exploited by you for that reason, what a bad, sinful nature you haven't repented of. I would say that it breaks my heart to see these things, but it doesn't. Because I've seen these things happen before. I would love to say that it brings me to tears, but it doesn't, because my eyes are dry. In a lot of ways, it disgusts me, but I must love the sinner and hate the sin. But it grieves me so. And the Spirit of God that's in me is grieved from that which men do and do not know or realize the consequence or the price that their children are paying for the parents' sin. God help us all.